How do you feel about the phrase, add value? It might be that you've come across the phrase as you've been exploring how to be more influential in your writing or how to reach more people through your business or find more clients for your services. When we talk about adding value, it's really the new way of marketing, but for some people we can feel really stumped about it. How do we add value? So if you're looking to market your services, grow your business, or be more influential in your writing, today's video is just for you, my friend. Firstly, thank you to Heather for your amazing question and your amazing comment. I love responding to questions and comments from the community. So if you're new here and you're not yet aware that this is what we do on this channel, then do always feel free to leave a comment at the end of videos. And also make sure you're subscribed and you have that notification bell hit so that you get told when there are new videos and it may be that I've answered your question. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to Heather's question and then I'm going to elaborate on this idea of adding value. And I've got two really nice ways that you can start to practice this beautiful technique so that you can reach more people with your copy, so that you can market in a way that feels authentic, become more influential with your writing and really find the perfect clients for your services. So this was a comment on one of the other videos I created, which was how to start a creative career. So we'll pop a link for that below as well. So Heather writes, you spoke on value, which is the exact thing that has caused me so much anxiety and I can't find a resolution. And so we're gonna dig into that, how we can find resolutions when we do feel anxious about doing new things. Heather also writes that she loves many art forms as expression, but that writing feels the most liberating for her. I totally resonate with that, Heather. She doesn't see how her writing adds value, even though she really wants it to. It's valuable to her, but the more she shares it, the less it's received by others. And often she's getting unfollows and less likes. So it really makes her feel as though she's not providing value and that her writing is useless to share. She's still continuing to do the work, but it's disheartening when she's supposed to be adding value to others, but she's not. And Heather writes here, I wanted a creative career primarily with my writing and my art. I've taken every step and pushed past big phobias, but the more I share, the more it becomes harder. So there's so much here to dig into. The first thing that I want to say is that this journey is hard and often we can think that because we're struggling or because our writing isn't resonating with others that that might be an indication to give up or stop. But actually, I want all of you to understand whenever you come across these challenges with growing your business or growing your audience or trying to be more influential with your writing, these challenges are simply a sign that you're about to come to the next level in your career. They're essentially a really specific training ground to prepare you for that next level. And so whenever we do come into a period that is hard, that is challenging, it can really help to understand that on the other side is going to be a breakthrough rather than have that automatic response of, oh, I guess this means that I'm not made for the career that I really want to choose. Okay, so I've got two tips that I want to share. But first of all, I always find whenever I'm about to share strategy, especially when I'm answering a specific question, that it's always really useful to look within first. The reason that inner work is so important before we start to look at specific steps to take is that we want to make sure that our mind and our soul and our mindset and our heart is prepared to do the work. So I find these Osho tarot cards a really beautiful way to do the inner work. So this is my deck that I use. And whenever I'm up against a challenge 
or it might be when I'm working with a client, we use the deck to show us what needs to shift before we start taking specific action to then get the results that we want. So I'm just going to shuffle the deck and Heather, I'm just going to really hold you in mind. I'm going to hold a sense of the challenge that you're having before I pick a card. Okay. Beautiful. So the card that's come up is the past lives card. Now, this card can have very different meanings. Now, the meaning that I'm taking today is actually mental chatter, because often when this card shows up, it can mean that our mind is so, so busy that it's not allowing us to see the course of or the path, the course of action that's available for us to take. So for those of you who are watching and feel that this video resonates with you, this idea of how can I add value? How can I be more influential with my writing? How can I share my work in a way that's resonating with people? Just take a moment to pause and ask yourself how much that mind chatter is getting in the way, because often that's the most challenging thing that the, the way ahead is available to us, but the thing that's holding us back is perhaps the negative story that we're saying to ourselves. So for example, if we come back to Heather's point, she says, it's extremely valuable as in her writing, but the more she shares, the less it's received by others, only unfollows and less likes. Now, the mental chatter in our mind can say, oh, that's a really bad thing. But here's what I would really encourage you all to understand. When you really start to share authentically, when you really start to offer the truth of what it is you want to speak about with your writing, yeah, often you do get those follows and often you do get less likes. And that's an indication that your current audience is not the audience for you. Now, what then happens is we then stop sharing. And that means that the people who are for me don't then get to see us. And I had exactly the same thing in my own journey when I was finding my voice and I was really getting clear about the value that I wanted to offer. So take heart. Sometimes when we get those unfollows, it's simply those tribe members or those people in our audience who aren't for us. And that's OK. So rather than see those unfollows or those less likes as a sign of negativity or as a sign to stop doing what you're doing, what I encourage is to follow my two mantras, authenticity and consistency. So to keep inquiring, am I talking about what I really want to talk about? And if the answer is yes, then all you need to do, my friend, is to remain consistent. Okay. So here we, there we've done a little bit of personal work. We really want to make sure that we're viewing the world in a way that serves us. And so for me, that's what that card represented, making sure that that mental chatter can be laid aside and you can really start to act on what your heart is asking for. Right, let's have a couple of tangible tips because this inner work is great, but we also want to get clear about like what actually can we do to add value? So my first tip is to ask questions. So with Heather's comment, she's talking about unfollows and less likes. So I'm assuming that she might be talking about either an Instagram account or a Twitter account. So what I suggest when you are looking to add value at the point that you want to be growing your audience is that you start asking questions. This is such a beautiful way to add value because what you're offering to people is an opportunity to think about things in a different way, to see things in a different way, but to also look within as they as they contemplate asking, answering the question, excuse me. So rather than telling people stuff or explaining stuff, or lecturing or educating, I find, and I probably do three pieces of content a day where I'm simply asking questions. Now, you might be thinking, hang on a sec, Gabriella, you're telling me to ask questions, but I just have a feeling that no one's going to answer them. And listen, I had exactly the same thing. It took me a while to really build my audience on Twitter, and there's going to be videos on how I managed to do that. So now when I ask questions, I do get regular engagement, but for a while, 
while I would ask questions and nobody was answering. So here's where we come back to this card. What was my mental chatter saying to me? Oh, nobody cares, there's no point. Now, if I'd listened to that, I would have stopped asking questions, but I kept at it because I knew that eventually there was gonna be one person for who that question really resonated. And now I get comments from people as they answer my question saying things like, oh, I found it really useful to answer this one. Like it's really brought a level of clarity. Now, because my audience are writers and creative entrepreneurs looking to make money from their writing or looking to build a business around their creative gifts or run a program or run a course or market their books, I tend to ask questions about all of this. But right at the beginning, when I was starting my business, when I was working as a life coach and I was setting myself up to serve writers and entrepreneurs, I didn't really know my audience. And so I started to ask questions so that I could get to know them and for me that's adding value because people love to be seen, people love to feel that they're important and that you care about them and for me it was really lovely to show that that was also important for me to be able to see my audience. So that's my first tip to ask questions. You might want to ask people what their dreams are or what their goals are or what's important to them. Really encourage them to start to tell you about them and then you're going to understand what's valuable to them and then you're going to be able to think about the things that you enjoy writing about or the services that you like to offer and how they will be of value to your audience. So you're also really going to find that questions such as asking people who they are, I also find that really important. So to tell things like really lovely things that might have been happening to them recently or challenges that they're facing or embarrassing moments or moments of strength or moments that they're proud of. So questions that are going to help you really understand who your, your, your audience is. So that's my first tip, asking questions. And then my second tip of adding value is to be a connector. Now this is lovely because it means that you're going to be really encouraged to start engaging with people on your platforms, engaging with people that you're meeting on social media and getting to know them through your questions. But then when you start to hear from other people and their answers to your questions, you're going to begin to think, hang on, these two people that I'm engaging with on my social media platforms, they should meet. So to have that as a really clear intention, so you're looking, who can I connect? Who can I introduce? I do this a lot on my platform on LinkedIn. I'm always open to connecting people with other people in my network and I get so much appreciation for it. Now, again, I'm not doing it because I want something in return. I'm doing it simply for the pleasure and the joy of connecting people. And what's so lovely is when the people are connected, they might do work with themselves. They might have a service to offer the other person or they might have a really powerful conversation that they want to engage in. So there's very little work required on my part, simply to just understand the people in my audience and understand who's going to get on with other people in my audience. So those are my two tips for adding value. But remember to be really aware of that mental chatter and whether it's holding you back and to understand that authenticity and consistency are absolutely key so that you keep showing up, but you want to make sure that you're keeping showing up, but you're keeping asking questions so that you understand your network, you understand your community, you understand who they are as people and what they want. So hopefully you've got some insight from this video, Heather and anybody else who's really struggling with how can I add value? Let me know in the comments below, what did you get from this video? And also, do you have questions? What are you struggling with when it comes to really creating a powerful foundation for your creative career or selling services or becoming more influential as a writer? Let me know what you might be struggling with so I can answer your questions in future videos. And if you found this useful and you wanna dig a little deeper into how you might create, live and earn just the way you want, see the link in the description below because I've got a free masterclass that is just for you. It's going to give you loads of insights as to how you can really take your creative career to the next level. Wishing you a beautiful day and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.
Take care.